cool, yep, all right. Uh, so, um, we're on to our second last talk for the day. Um, so Inga is, is she run, it? sorry? If you have lightning oh, talks. Oh, yes. <laughs> what about lightning talks? Yeah. If you have lightning talks, please either tweet at me or send me an email if you somehow know my email. Or if we have time and we get through all everyone who's emailed, we will be able to like just have people come up come and Come up and up. talk. So I'll that be making up a talk on the fly, so I mean you can see how bad it can go. That'll be um, not after this one, but the next talk. Yep. Uh, so please do give lightning talks, they're lots of fun. Um, but yes, now we have Inga. Inga uh, is the uh, organiser of the Sydney Unity, Unity Game Dev, game dev Meetup. Dev meetup. Yep. Uh, and Inga will be talking about how you can make games with Electron, as the slide implies. So I'm just going to hand it right over. Please join me in welcoming Inga. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Inga. I have a corgi. Generally, that's the main thing you need to know about me. I'm organizer of Sydney Unity Game Dev Meetup and Women in Game Development Meetups. Uh, I work at SMG Studio and mostly I work with Unity. But sometimes, like when I work with Unity, for me, it's always about finding balance between the stuff I can do and the stuff I want to do, which is like new Skyrim. But I also know all of those amazing things about architecture and how you should work on your project, and I never apply them when I work in Unity. So sometimes I want to try and make a project with good programming practices. And that's one of the projects I'm going to talk to you about here today. So, the project that I use as, a, as an example was developed for BITS unit at RMIT. BITS unit at RMIT, it's a study unit when they separate you into several groups for like four or five people, and you work on your project. It can be a 2D game, Arduino, chatbots, whatever. We worked on a game, as you can see, and it was developed in 12 weeks by a team of four people. Uh, need, I need to say that it wasn't a game design project. It was a game development project. You probably know the difference between game design and, and game programming. We didn't have time to create a system from zero to hero in 12 weeks. So we just took a board game that already existed and created some additional features for it, and that's it. It's a study project. You can find it on GitHub. So, the project. We based our project on game Crows. Crows is a very simple board game. Uh, you get tiles with crows on them. You position your tiles. Uh, it's actually a video I'm trying to play now. Let's see. You place tiles, then you place crows. After that, you place your shiny object. Your shiny object attracts crows. You count crows. Who has more crows at the end? One. That's a very simple project, as you can see. It gave us all the game logic we needed. So we didn't have to think on what's happening after what. We already knew how it's going to look like at the end. And yeah, and that's our game. Generally, it's the same stuff. You have a table, you get a card, you place it, then you place your shiny object. And your opponent does the same. Ships fly, you catch space pirates, because space pirates are amazing. And everyone should use space pirates at least one in their lives. Um, so, what the technology we used? We used Electron, Node.js, HTML, and CSS. Before I get into Electron, a side note on the experience. We were a team of four people. We had a tech lead. A team lead, me. I have some experience with project management, but I never was a tech lead before. We had a back-end developer with no experience with Node. We had front-end developer with no experience with CSS and HTML. And we had a full-stack developer that never tried JavaScript before. So I think it looks like an amazing start for a project. If you never tried it, try it. You'll learn stuff. So how did we do it? We started with architecture. Team of four people, it's not a very small team. It's still, four it's still four people. Each and every one has to understand how the project works, what he or she needs to do. And I have to say, being a tech lead, I think I wrote like maybe only several lines of code at the end, because everything else was about meetings, plannings, documentation, meetings and plannings again. 
So uh, it was very refreshing for me. One of the first challenges, we needed to find a working structure while still trying to implement some of the good architectural practices we knew. So we, need to find, we needed to find our project architecture, plan everything and manage everything. Uh, as you probably all know, you start your game development with your flow. So we started with a flow for a hot seat game. If you don't know what's happening here, generally you just imagine how your game is going to work. And based on that, you set the states. That's what happening, what's happening at every stage of your game. Uh, you, it's, it will also give you your game loop. So the steps that you will go into repeat again and again until you have your winner, if your game has a winner. Based on that, we managed to create a game state object. Game state object, it's an object that keeps all the relevant inf information at every stage of your game. To be fair, game object, <laughs> to create your game object at early stage is not the requirements. Uh, now I'm working on a pet project where I form my game state object at the end because I use test-driven development. So generally I just write a test and then decide what my game state object needs for this test to pass. So game state object can be a beginning of your architecture or it may not be. It's for you to decide. And now we're getting into Electron. So what's Electron? Electron is an open source framework and generally it allows you to use your web technologies for your app, for your PC app. It's very good for web developers because you're generally doing the same stuff you're doing when you develop websites. You write your HTML, you style it with your CSS, you add your JavaScript to make it interactive, and you use Node.js on backend. Another good thing about Electron, it kind of forces you into good architecture planning. Why? Because Electron has two threads, main thread, and render thread. And this way, it kind of right away separates your game into two parts, front end and back end, as you usually do with web development. <laughs> and because of this messaging system, it pushes you to use unidirectional flow for your architecture. Uh, it's better to see on this slide. Here you see green is our game state object or our state. Here's our at back end, and our blue is our front end. As you can see, our back end initiates the game state object, and after that, our back end is the only thing that talks to our game state. It initiates game state, it works with it, then it sends it to front end. Front end renders your game state object, and then it messages back, I'm done, what should I do next? So, your data, is never changed in two places. It only changed in one. This way, let's, let me put it like that. It's a very good way to organize your things because you never have conflicts that way because all of your data kept and managed by just one end, not both of them. That's a bit long that. And how did we do it? We had a set of requirements. That's usually the requirements you get from your client. Here, it's requirements from uni. And as you can see, they weren't very helpful. Have some core feature, have some additional feature, have something working. So we created our own list of features. My list was very simple. My list was, let's create something really fast. It should work. And I wanted to have some accessibility. In my experience, the longer you have a project that is in planning state or in development state where, where nothing, when you don't have anything that works right away, people get less motivated when that happens. They want to see something. They want to see their game, some bits and pieces of their game. That's why we wanted to show something at week two and then every two weeks develop something else. That was my list. That was the list of features of my developers. They wanted to have network gameplay. Just a quick reminder, no experience with like literally anything that we were using. 
So I kind of freaked out a bit when I saw that. On the other hand, I think one of the best mindsets for developers is the trying mindset. Like, Master Yoda was wrong. I love people who love trying. They try one thing, then they try another thing. First, it's easy to keep them motivated because they're generally motivated by the next task. On the other hand, if this next task is unachievable, they lose their motivation. So the goal was to separate the process for small pieces and to make sure that we achieve something at each, at each iteration. So after some diplomacy, that's what we got. We had our core feature, that's like my list, something working, start with hot seat, make sure you have something work, something work, make sure something works at each and every stage. Additional features, go wild guys, do whatever you want, you want network, do your network, I'll do animations for you and sound effects and whatever. But generally, there was one main requirement, work in hot seat, and then some wilderness and enjoyment on the other end. And it worked out. I have to say, while my develop, like, while my developers were deciding how it's going to work and what we should do, we did some design iterations. That's like the first phase. That's the second one. That's something that I wrote to show how it's going to look like at the end. And that's our final game that you just saw. So, lessons learned. Electron is good for you. Planning good for you, good team lead is good for you. But yeah, uh, on more serious note, um, Electron is a very good thing for prototyping small, easy projects when you just want to try something. It doesn't ask you for anything specific. If you can create a website, if you know some JavaScript, if you can read documentation on Node.js, you can go download Electron and start experimenting with it. Experience with architecture is more important than framework or language. If you understand how things should work at the end, it's, a, it's one of the main things. Quite often when I talk to developers at meetups, people just start with small little things. They create something small, then they work to, want to scale it up, and it doesn't scale because at the beginning they missed something, they didn't think of something. So your project architecture is very important. Don't miss this step. Think about it as early as you can. And the more planning you do, the easier it will be at later stages. That's about it. I still have a corgi. Uh, you can find me there. Our project is on GitHub. You can download it. You can play it right now. It has some god awful sounds. There were like three sounds I was able to find and they were so awful, I literally asked my guys not to play with sound. And then they said, we kind of like it, it works. So we left it in. I still don't play it with sound ever. And here are my developers in case you want to contact them or whatever. So, thank you. Go use Electron. <laughs> Any questions? Electron uses, uses up resources because generally it just, when you start your app, it opens Chromium inside of it. So if your game is really big, if it uses lots of data, then probably Electron is not the best tool to do it. But if it's something small, if it's something that you literally can put on website, then Electron is your friend. Anyone else? Sure. What was the hardest part of the project? Hmm. I think the hardest part was for me to believe that we will be able to realize some, network some networking features. 
Because when I saw this in planning, I thought, oh my God, we don't have experience with any of this stuff. There is no way we do anything network connected. And, but also, I think one of the important things about any project is trust. If you trust your developers, if you're ready to let them run wild, and you know they will come back to you to finish your core features, then go for it. Anyone else? No, that's it. Thank you then. Thank you guys. <laughs>